most welcome to Estoya Spanama History Concerts and Boxing and Unboxing General Motors Conquering the World in the 1920s. This is the story of General Motors that by the late 1920s had become the largest automobile manufacturer in the world and why wooden boxes play a key role in its expansion in the global markets. GM recognized the potential of international markets and in the 1920s began exporting vehicles from USA to Europe, South America, Asia and Australia. To facilitate international sales, GM established assembly plants and distribution networks overseas, making it easier to penetrate the foreign markets and also to avoid punishing taxes. So stay with us and watch this story of big time boxing and unboxing a hundred years ago. And please subscribe to our channel and join us on our journey in history. General Motors practice of exporting cars in the 1920s used the method of shipping them as completely knocked down kits, CKD. This involved a complex and strategic process of disassembly, packaging and transportation. Vehicles were first manufactured in the United States or Canada. They were fully assembled and tested to ensure they met quality standards. Once approved, cars were partially disassembled to create CKD kits. This involved removing wheels, bumpers, doors, engines and other components to break the car down into easily transportable parts. GM implemented standardized parts and modular components to streamline the disassembly process. This standardization was crucial to ensure that parts could be reassembled quickly and efficiently in overseas plants. The design of vehicles was adapted to facilitate easy disassembly and reassembly, minimizing the complexity and time required at each stage. The disassembled parts were carefully packed into large wooden crates. Each crate was designed to hold specific parts in a way that minimized space and protected the components from damage during transit. The crates were robust, often reinforced to handle long-distance shipping and the rigors of loading and unloading. GM coordinated shipping schedules and routes to ensure timely delivery to assembly plants in various countries. The crates were typically shipped via ocean freight to major ports near GM's overseas assembly plants. Upon arrival at their destinations, the crates had to clear customs. The CKD approach often allow GM to benefit from lower input duties as disassembled parts were taxed differently from fully assembled vehicles. GM established assembly plants in key markets such as the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Brazil, Argentina and Japan. These plants were strategically located to serve regional markets and take advantage of local labor and resources. In some countries, GM partnered with local companies to facilitate the assembly process. The reassembly process was modeled after the production line techniques used in GM's domestic factories to ensure efficiency and consistency. The assembly manual specified safety guidelines such as lifting techniques and protective gear. Tools required were torque wrenches, alignment tools and assembly jigs. A parts list was provided for chassis, frame, engine and electrical components, body panel and interior fittings. Then, step-by-step -step instructions for chassis assembly, powertrain installation, body assembly, interior installation, electrical systems and final assembly. Diagrams and illustrations for chassis engine mounting and wiring harness and quality control guidelines were also included and market specific adjustments such as right hand drive and emission equipment were added.
That's all folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.